Let's go harvesting. Morning. This needs replacing. This one is well next to it. And there's a bolt right here. There it is, I unhooked it. Someone needs to clean this window. These are actually a, kind of a non-GMO, they are a non-GMO specialty bean that is being grown for seed. So these will be taken by the seed company and cleaned and bagged and resold next year as seed to grow this bean. We were out of room when we quit last night, so we put the final about nine, 10,000 pounds of soybeans in here, left them in, we'll run those into the truck, and then we're gonna go get some diesel. Ditch gets excited when I wave at her from the combine. It's particularly important to keep this one nice and clean so that I can get better pictures of the grain cart for Instagram while we're on the move. Look at that. Martha Stewart would be proud. You can't even tell there's a window there. Come on, come on. What are you doing? Getting ready for the Vikings game or for deer hunting? Both. Both. Good boy. Where are you going, Anna? Heads up, we're coming at a high rate. Off to the field. Onyx, you want to explain what we're doing? Um, we're bringing the header there and we're going to hook it up, come back and get lunch and go and harvest. That's right. Beans are still a little wet, so they're not going to be ready to harvest yet. But we've been having some issues with the electrical plug on this. If you have watched the recent videos, you know we've got some issues going on there. So uh, we're going to hook it up early this morning in case we got problems we got to deal with, get it done ahead of time. You tell me when. Uh, four feet, three feet, two, one, zero. Oh, this new header is definitely a pain in the neck to hook up compared to the old ones. It's so fussy, you've gotta be on there just perfect, and you can't see. The wind system doesn't make it any easier, but the tabs that go underneath here, you can't, excuse me, you can't see at all compared to the old style one where it came around in front, it was really simple. We're waiting for vehicles to try to turn around on the state highway. We gotta get out, back up, and in. There we go. Try not to take the neighbor's beans. Honest, you watching what you're filming at all? We got this corner opened up and these beans are drier than I thought, that's for sure. Well, they look drier than they than they taste. What do you think, Onyx? 16%? They're a little wet yet. We're gonna go do a couple other things for an hour or two without any without much wind and no sun. These aren't gonna dry out too quickly, but we'll get out here. Hey. You too. You too, now settle down. Before we go into the spin, we got a couple of chunks down here that slid off the wall we gotta get through. Now getting inside of a grain bin certainly can be dangerous, but the fact is is that sometimes it has to be done. The grain right here is not more than a foot deep, and I've got a guy outside watching everything, helping me out and I am well aware of where the sumps are at here. So this is not crusted over, I'm not gonna break through, and it's not gonna shift and all of a sudden wash, wash me down. There's really no danger at all of me suffocating in this. The only danger is me stepping into a sump, which is actually a much more narrow hole than it looks like. And even if I do, it's not gonna kill me unless I bleed out from having my foot ripped off. So that's a silver lining. Some of these chunks are just a little bit higher moisture, the beans will stick together. When they run through the auger, they'll break up. They'll go back through the grain dryer with the wet beans. They'll come back in and be perfectly fine. Dad jumped out to go switch where we're going with these beans. It's pretty well open up. I'm just gonna watch it for another three, four minutes here and make sure we're all clear. 
But uh, in all seriousness, guys, for the farmers out there, remember, we got to be careful. We got to go home to our families at night. So if you do have to go in a bin, please be careful. Uh, have somebody with you. Know what you're doing. It is what it is. We got to be. We got to be safe. We got to go home to our families at night. There's nothing more important than that. Our local fire department, at least one of them for sure, has a lot of really good safety equipment to deal with grain bin issues and actually used some of that equipment here about a month ago. We have lost uh, four or five in the state of Minnesota this summer, four or five farmers to grain bin incidents. We're a very low percentage of the population anyway. Let's take care of ourselves. Go time. Josh, if you got your ears on down there, I'm just gonna pull up to the house here and find Onyx. 23, we'll just take a left here, follow the gravel road around, take it halfway back to Lowry, and then we're in that uh, field on the north side of 114. Sounds good. Onyx, are the Vikings gonna win today? Oh yeah. We're playing the Lions. Brittany wanted me to. Well, she can't have you. Yeah. I mean, she could, I guess. You're probably gonna get bored eventually. Now there is a combine. Try this. Got four wheel drive. Maybe try this. I don't have four wheel drive. Yeah, we are not moving. Hi, we need a rope. I think we may as well just get the 9560 up here and hang the rope on the back, just wrap it around the three point. We'll just follow follow the crew around with the 9560. Sounds good. Dad's gonna bring the tractor up. It isn't gonna take much to pull that out of there and get it straight. In the meantime, Onyx and I are gonna harvest. Josh over here is one of our seasonal workers. He's a 23. 23, I got you on video. Okay. All right, I'm gonna jump out, Onyx. I'll be right back. Don't bump anything. The settings are not right. It's amazing how much overnight changes like that. It looks like crap behind us. What do you mean by crap? Too many beans going on the ground and not in the tank, so we're going to switch back to where we were yesterday afternoon. I'd say that's a lot better. We went through a wet spot there. I don't like the pots. It's better on the ground. And everybody in the Purple Covenant, drink up and let's tell all these lions, shut your mouth. Jim, we got this uh, draw in front of us that Randy closed for us last year. Let's go around that instead of trying to go through it right now. Are you sure? No, uh, it, it looks dry. It looks cool. <laughs> I think let's go around it. Too soon? That's where Jim got buried last spring. Yeah, I know. More paparazzi? Back at Onyx. Looks like you got a bunch of fans over there. I have no idea who that is. I have been kicked out of the 9870 for right now. The boss has taken that over. I'm gonna head home and actually work on... Shh. Shh. I'm gonna get that machine going. Okay, seriously, this is an unbelievable opportunity that I've been given. And I can't thank uh, John Deere and Midwest Machinery enough. I hope you guys enjoy this. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun to see how this brand new machine works. And it's nice for us to have a second machine around right now. Hopefully you guys can learn a little bit about it. I certainly am gonna learn a little bit about it. It's gonna be fun. Shiny. A lot of glass. Beautiful. some calibrations for the feeder house to make sure this thing can control the header up down side to side you name it pretty boring stuff all done on the computers over here now I think I'm gonna fire the machine up open the grain tanks eyeball everything not screw anything up basically how hard can it be opening Sweet. 
got all my settings set up. The outside covers are all closed. I uh, used the Go Harvest app from Deer here on my phone to get the settings right. Here we go. Let's start the back. I didn't hear any wrenches come out. Let's start it for a little longer. We're running. Separator is running. Throttle up. See what we want our rotor and our fan set to. It'll be about 600 and 900,000. So far, nothing sounds like I broke it. So I'm going to hook a header to it and start that as well. Multiple calibration procedures needed. I will now perform multiple calibration procedures. I think I've got our calculations done here. By the Vikings moving I think I'm waiting for Midwest Machinery to transfer me my fields. Sounds like they can do that remotely. Just transfer me all my fields that'll show up on the monitor here. And I just hit import. And then I've magically got all my fields here to work with so that I can combine, harvest, get all that data on the fields and have that data uploaded to the cloud on my John Deere. I'm gonna load this header up. Josh is gonna bring me out there. Let's do it. What'd you say, Rhiannon? I lost my tooth. You lost your tooth? You don't hardly have any left in there. What do you have there? Oh, your tooth? For the Tooth Fairy? He's riding the new combine. I am. You gonna go in it next week? Anna wants to go in it. No. You're not gonna? What do you mean? I don't like traffic. That makes me very sad. Oh, that. Brian, I believe in Ohio they call that government juice. Is that, is that correct? Luckily, we've got 55 gallons of it in there. But first, more diesel. For those who don't know, DEF is short for diesel exhaust fluid. I don't know the science behind it. I know it's a lot of nitrogen and a lot of water that gets injected into the exhaust system on a diesel engine. We have never had an engine that takes DEF before. The reason for it, the purpose of it is for emissions so that the, the air or the exhaust coming out the end of the motor coming out the muffler the header the exhaust is cleaner air so that that's the idea of it is cleaner air cleaner burning engines so we run that exhaust fluid in those engines for that purpose uh, these engines will not run without it in fact I believe they're not even legal to be built or run without it um, it's a fairly new thing we've never owned a machine that actually uses it a lot of new semis, or all new semis, I believe, now have it. All of our machines are actually old enough that there is no exhaust fluid on any of our machines. Eventually, probably pretty soon here as we move into newer machines, we're gonna need it. But so far, the only machine we've ever had where we use it was last year's Challenger when we had the uh, 743 out here. That used it, but that was literally the only other engine we've ever had on this farm that burns deaf. Luckily, this Thunder Creek trailer has a 100 gallon DEF tank in it so that I can transfer the DEF from the barrel into this tank and then from this tank into the combine. Thunder. I think I know what I'm doing, but I've been wrong before. Like I said, it was, uh, it was just a thought. I don't actually have a clue. How do we, who do we, where does this, who am I? What does a horseshoe do? We need to deafen this combine and I'm pretty confident this Thunder Creek, uh, the attachment we got for it only works with, with a uh, 250 gallon tow. Parts at the local John Deere dealer are open until four, which means I've got 16 minutes to go nine miles. I'm going to get deaf. It's understandable that, uh, that that the Thunder Creek attachment would only fit at 250 because after all it's got a 100 gallon tank on the trailer 
typically anybody who buys a trailer like that with that option is gonna need plenty of depth. But in our situation, we are only thinking we're gonna need uh, probably 100 gallons of depth at the most, which is why we just started out with a 55 gallon drum, which we'll just return to Midwest and, uh, and swap them out for whatever. But uh, it's just our situation. So I'm just gonna go get some jugs, get enough to get going tonight so I can keep moving here. Got the juice. Environmentaling. Saving the planet. Let's go harvesting. You know, first off, I wanna thank Deer for putting these really lovely flat metal corner posts in. It gives me multiple angles to mount a magnetic camera onto. It's those little details, you know? It is a tremendously odd feeling not being able to see any tires out here. Just need to open the tank, but not under these power lines. Cross the road, and then figure out what I missed. Unfolding. I don't really know what I'm doing. That's gotta be a good sign, right? I'd say 100 feet is plenty far enough before I gotta get out and check, make sure I'm not destroying anything that isn't mine. Boy, I sure hope I don't get this thing muddy. Sure hope not. The beans were really short here and I was driving super slow, so I was losing some at the head, but I know enough to know that we're okay. I'm gonna fine tune the settings from here, but nothing is way off. Hopefully uh, Onyx is out finding some deer. I am so nervous. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed. I, I didn't really, I haven't messed with any of the settings at all. I just followed the Go Harvest app and we're cleaning pretty clean for not having to mess with any settings. I'm in some little bit better beans now. I'm gonna jump out behind and look pretty soon here, but things are smooth. It's cold in here. How do I change that? Well, that just happened automatically. Came on and told me that I'm three quarters full. How neat is that? These are a bit drier. Oh no, I got it muddy. I was really hoping to make it all the way around the field and back. We really have this one for about a half an hour yet or 20 minutes at least yet, so. But I don't dare risk it. I'm not gonna make it. I don't eat cap corn, cap beans on the first hopper ever. So now I get to drive all the way back 15 sixteenths of the way around this field again. But that means the beans are better than I was thinking, so that's good. Two things. Number one, Josh is at the end of the field here to pick me up because we got problems at home with a uh, motor smoking a belt, so something must be plugged up. There must be an issue there. Second of all, I went through a muddy spot back there and the pro drive transmission on this thing downshifted, tipped it forward like this, and I got cab beans. First tank ever on this machine, ever. It's never even been unloaded. I also have no idea how to turn the lights on. I've got buttons for them, but they don't turn on. It's got to be in here somewhere. There, lights. Unlock, maybe? I'll figure it out when I get back. Call this polar bean. You were, it was this auger, right? The west one? <laughs> Sounds like everything's running fine, yeah, huh? Dust flying. dust flying there? So then I can dump this tractor and we'll close this down some and watch it. But it should be, I think we just got that pit running too fast. Yeah, it was. Sick. That overhead conveyor eventually couldn't keep up yeah, and it, it kept backing up until it jammed everything. Yeah. 
canooter valve is too far over. Yes. Kniffler pin fell off. Kniffler pin. <laughs> Sheared a kniffler. <laughs> Flashed them. Time to get back to work. Dark over here. 780. Are you out here? It's wanting to show me that the hopper's full, which I'm well aware of. But I just want to know how to... Oh, there we go. I need to know how to turn the lights on. Let's see. What can I mess up in here? Is it not on the column or up above anywhere? No, I can't find it. I, no, it's all on the armrest, but when I push them, they don't do anything. I'm very confused. Oh, look at that. I just... Ah. I might have it. It's on the side of this... Yes, there it is. I've never had a turn signal lever before. Whew, crisis averted. Got him. Well, it appears as though the unload is working, so that, that's good. Uh, I did run it, but I was a little nervous with a full hopper that what if something didn't work? It's, it is definitely considerably quieter than our 9870. I'm trying to keep the shadows out of here. It's just shadows. There's not actually a screen out there. That's not actually my hand out by that truck. Whoa, look at that. I'm empty now, but I didn't even notice that. Back to harvesting. I've got some really short beans here, and you can see how dry they were. You can actually see the white looking pods. Those are pods that actually, after they froze, they dried out so much they snapped open and the beans are laying on the ground. If they stay out here too long, that's what's gonna happen now, especially since they froze. So we're losing yield every day by watching those pods shatter on their own. But I'll get back to you in a minute. We're getting after it. Two machines, two grain carts, three trucks. Everything's up and going tonight. Got to knock out what we can before the rain gets here. You know what I haven't mentioned about this combine yet? Because I've just had my head. I've been in my own head all day trying to figure out how to set this thing up. But the combine advisor part of this machine will actually control all of the settings within the machine and monitor based off of your settings it will monitor the grain quality and the sample and what's coming in the back and what's going out the back and it's the millennial mode it's the whole millennial mode like the uh like that strange looking combine i drove out in montana on uh, welker farms channel it'll it'll do just that only only probably better i would think right i would think better and we're going to get into that but not tonight because i want the help of trained professionals to make sure I do that correctly. So for tonight, I'm just going to do the best job that I can of putting these soybeans from the field into this hopper behind me and into a grain bin. This is just cool. It's only 1030 right now and we're getting some raindrops on the windows. We were really hoping to at least finish this field. You can see dad working over there. It's not like it's raining hard, but it looks like the rain is 10 to 20 miles out and we don't want to get a lot of rain on these combines, especially with some of the beans sitting around in the hoppers and whatnot. Beans just, they don't take well to rain, including the chaff. As I was saying, the chaff that builds up on the machines and all the nooks and crannies in the corners, when that gets wet, eventually it sets up and gets a lot harder to move. So it's nice if you can keep that fluffy and dusty. Probably not gonna happen this year, but we're only a mile from home. So if it's gonna rain, we want to get stuff home, get it under a roof, get it in the shed. Yeah, I just pulled my head up, there's nothing like that. I'll talk to you later. We're gonna have to call it a night yeah, here. Hey, just kidding, the rain lightened up and we're gonna keep going here. <laughs> Since it's right there on radar, we may as well go until everything is soaked in a mess. Uh, Anybody happen to know where the uh, windshield wiper control is in a 780? Just kidding. It's not raining anymore. Giddy up. This right here will do it for my side of the ditch. It's weird trying to push the buttons on the joystick with your left hand. But it sounds like Dad's got about 30 acres left across the ditch on the other side of the quarter, so I'm going to jump over there 
and help him finish up before it starts raining again. It's a bit of a wide rig going down the road, but luckily I'm not going far. And it's not exactly rush hour out here. It's a game of harvest chicken. How much could we destroy if this situation went wrong? That's it, we're done, we finished it. Just uh, some super light sprinkles coming down. You can't really tell because the wind is blowing so much of the chaff around. We're done with, with this field, with what we wanted to get done tonight. And it is, uh, let's see, just about, there it is, just about, you saw it anyway, just about 1 o'clock a.m. Good night.